when Nixon invaded Cambodia, the protest erupted again. And at Kent State in Ohio, four students were shot to death by National Guardsmen. Four days later in New York, protesters were attacked by pro-Nixon construction workers, hard hats. At the White House, Nixon accepted a hard hat as a gift, an unmistakable symbol to his base. Campaigning for Republican candidates that fall, Nixon went after the protesters himself. They're the same thugs and hoodlums that have always plagued the good people. That is a portion of a piece Tom Brokaw did for us a few years ago on the anniversary of Nixon's silent majority speech. And that so-called hard hat riot is a scene, Joe, that you focus in on in your latest column for The Washington Post. It's titled, Trump is destroying the Republican Party. Why won't any of his peers speak up? And in it, you write in part this. Perhaps no scene better dramatizes the turbulent political age that we have been passing through for a half century than the hard hat riot of 1970. That violent showdown in lower Manhattan pitted anti-war protesters against enraged union members who took umbrage at long-haired hippies they saw as desecrating the American flag. The chaotic event long ago passed into political folklore for conservatives, helping to mark the moment when white working class identity shifted from economic to cultural. As Vanderbilt history professor Jefferson Carey wrote in The New York Times in May, the new class war would be waged not against the old corporate robber barons, but the impudent snobs of the cultural elite. That shift may explain why so many working-class Americans have been voting against their own economic interests for so long. Then-President Richard Nixon declared, thank God for the hard hats, and began building a new majority, including white, working-class voters who supported politicians they saw as backing the troops and revering their sacrifice. For decades, Republican politicians and thought leaders followed Nixon's lead, even when that meant shamelessly attacking Democratic war heroes such as George McGovern, Max Cleland, and John Kerry for the political crime of being insufficiently patriotic. Given the party's brash support of all things patriotic, the past week's developments have been disorienting, even for the age of Trump. Post associate editor Bob Woodward's new revelations regarding President Trump's pandemic performance will forever tarnish the 45th president's legacy. But Trump's savage attacks on America's military leaders and war dead will leave a lasting scar on his Republican Party. The Playboy Skyon, who avoided military service in Vietnam by claiming bone spurs, told Woodward that the decorated military leaders who serve him are pussies and suckers. That's the word he used. It can be no coincidence that the president reportedly also called the 1,800... 1,800 Marines who died at Bella Wood suckers for giving their lives in war. After those comments were reported by The Atlantic's Jeffrey Goldberg, Trump predictably made matters worse for himself by mounting a defense that showed just how much he loathed the military and those who serve as its leaders. They want to do nothing but fight wars so that all of those wonderful companies that make the bombs and make the planes and make everything else stay happy. Trump blurted out at a news conference, this commander in chief offering lectures on the excesses of the military industrial complex is laughable. He has, after all, championed weapon sales like no president before him. Trump even refused to cancel billions in arms sales to Saudi Arabia after the killing of post contributing columnist Jamal Khashoggi because he didn't want to lose an order like that. He said doing so would be unfair to Boeing, Lockheed, and Raytheon. Trump's Republican Party has been damaged yet again by their leader's offensive statements. It has also lost any claim it ever had at being the U.S. military's bulwark against left-wing attacks. A recent Military Times poll suggests that most active-duty troops agree with the plurality-supporting Democratic nominee Joe Biden's presidential bid. 
Perhaps Lindsey Graham was right when he predicted that Trump would destroy the Republican Party. The question that remains is why the South Carolina senator and so many of his peers stay silent <clears throat> while the honor of our military leaders is under attack by America's president. One wonders what the hard hat rioters would have thought about that. David Ignatius, I, of course, have um, been concerned um, about uh, the fact that Donald Trump is destroying the conservative movement for years, uh, talking about that he was a big spending Democrat, deficits, debts, NATO, destroying NATO, cozying up to Russia, all the things that we conservatives, uh, the opposite of what We've, we've always done. Um, but this past week really has been an extraordinary breach of, of what Republicans always claimed they were uh, to the American people, this bulwark against uh, attacks against our U.S. military. You remember the hard hat riots. You remember Republicans and Nixon taking up that mantle of, of you know, America, love it or leave it and support our troops. And now you have a Republican president uh, calling our war dead suckers. Mm. Uh, you have him on tape uh, using the vilest of words, attacking actually people like James Mattis and, and others uh, who fought in wars uh, like Vietnam. Uh, I'm just wonder, wondering what your take is about the relative silence of these Republicans uh, not coming out and forcefully attacking the president's um, just desecrate, desecration of our war dead and, and his attacks on these men and women who have given their lives uh, and are still sacrificing uh, leading our military. We lost the audio. We'll, we'll get back to David. Willie Geist, uh, it, is, it is quite a turn, uh, isn't it? It is. And if you read through the response to, you talked about the desecration of military veterans and fallen heroes. If you read the response now just this week, that was last week's uh, indictment of the president. If you read this week's responses on the Woodward book, it's actually staggering because it's all in print, it's all on tape, the contradictions, the lies, everything the president has said, and yet you have Republican after Republican falling into either the bucket of, I didn't read the book, I don't have time to read the book, which is sort of the long form version of, I didn't see the tweet, or praising the president and the White House's leadership. You have Mitch McConnell saying of the president, quote, he should be applauded, not criticized. Again, he said that, Mitch McConnell, the majority leader, said that after the revelations in the Woodward book. Um, you had people like Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio saying, I didn't read the book, I won't read the book. I should point out that Ted Cruz also this week appeared on President Trump's short list of potential Supreme Court justice nominees. Perhaps he was holding out for that. But if you can't criticize President Trump on this, <clears throat> when it's on the record, on tape, and his own voice, and you have that number next to me, right under me, 193,000 deaths, what will you criticize the president for? Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.